All right. Semcha, you are live on the air, brother. Go ahead with your question. Yeah. Hi, Rafelia. Um I really love your videos, and I appreciate what you're doing for calling so. Um, I just had one question regarding the poll conversion. I wanted to know if he, since he was uh, a great, you know, scholar and he was student of Rabbi Gamaliel, why would he convert to Christianity? <laughs> just a question for you, Simcha. Why would you think that Paul was a student of Gamaliel? Um, I read it and I, I thought it was a pretty reliable source. What's the source? It was a book by Ari Kaplan. So I'm not familiar with the Ari Kaplan book. Where I was heading with this is this, Paul doesn't claim to be a student of Gamaliel. Gamaliel, we're told in the book of Acts in chapter 5 and 22, um, is connected to Paul. Paul won't dare make that claim. That's the key. Gamaliel, Rabbi Gamaliel, was the giant of the generation. He was the Godel Hador. He, was, he, was, uh, he lived in the first half of the first century. That would mean like you study theoretical physics with Einstein at Princeton University. You're not leaving that out of your CV, you understand? And Paul, in fact, doesn't make this claim. Why? Because Paul's letters all written during the 50s, meaning he's living at the same time, if he would claim that he was a student of Einstein, they would laugh him out the window, fellow. So Paul doesn't make that claim. That's what's critical. The claim is made in in Acts, not in any of the letters of Paul. And we find this frequently. The author of the book of Acts makes claims about Paul that we don't find in Paul's letters. The frequency of his visiting Jerusalem, being a student of Gamaliel, Paul never makes that claim. Now, unless you think Paul is being humble, I encourage you to read Galatians 1 and 2, Philippians 3, Paul loved Paul. Paul wanted very much for you to believe in him, to think that he was the premier apostle. What he has is directly from Jesus Christ. What I have is not from Jerusalem, but directly from Jesus. That, that's Paul's whole theme, that he's a Pharisee of Pharisees, the smartest fellow in the class. Of course, when we explore how Paul misquotes the Hebrew Bible, it's very clear that Paul was operating from a world, from a Greek world, not from a Hebrew world, and his knowledge of Tanakh had been damaged violently. But so Paul's going to claim that he, you know, participated in murdering Stephen in some way. I don't believe it. I think the story of Stephen um, is a plot device in order to make Paul look like, look at his chain. He went from being a a Christian killing Pharisee to a Lord serving Christian believer in Jesus. That's the point. That's the point of the device. Now, I think Paul always was a highly disagreeable person. And it's very obvious from his letters that he basically couldn't get along with people. In his own letters, he couldn't get along with fellow Christians, couldn't get along with Barnabas. Barnabas introduced him to the Jerusalem church. He couldn't get along with John Mark, wouldn't travel with him. It's inconceivable that these stories were invented. So therefore, the story of Gamaliel being the Rebbe, the rabbi of Paul, is completely made up. There's no source for this outside of the book of Acts. And of course, Christians like it. And that's why it's interesting that Rebbe Gamaliel in the Christian Bible, is the only non-Christian Jew that's held in very high esteem. And he's called the, you know, the great teacher. And you go to um, Acts chapter 5, verse 34. You go to um, Acts chapter 22, verse 3. There you have these claims. But why isn't Paul making them in his own letters? Even the letters that he didn't write but are ascribed to him. There are five letters that I happen to think that some of them were. I think that Paul participated in writing Ephesians and Colossians. But the pastoral epistles, I don't believe he wrote those. I don't think he wrote Second Thessalonians. Not many people do. Even in those books, it's not there. 
Why not? So the answer is that if you say he was a student of the Gamaliel, it lends credibility to him. And because Paul's letters are all written in the 50s, you can't make that kind of claim. A generation later in the book of Acts, as I mentioned, Acts is written 85, 90. It means 40 years later, and you can write whatever you want. In a generation, meaning in a century, that people, not everyone, but people generally didn't live a very long time in the first century. People, There were old people, but you had to dodge a lot of bullets in the first century to live to be 70, 80 years old. There were people who did, but ask yourself the question. There's a point here. Ask yourself the question, if modern medicine didn't exist, if antibiotics didn't exist, would you be alive today? Well, my grandmother survived tuberculosis before antibiotics. She dodged a bullet. She was a young girl in the early 20th century. But a lot of people just died. Now, what's the point of that? How does that relate to this? So if people so frequently died so young, so a gen 40 years was a, a much longer time with, than it is today because a lot of people could tell you what happened 40 years ago. I could tell you about Watergate. <laughs> I remember it. It was the biggest thing. Okay? It was the yeah, – because – People live, thank God, people live longer now. So therefore, the claim is not made by Paul. It's made by whoever wrote the book of Acts. Once the book of Acts is written at the end of the first century, and I'm saying that conservatively, there are some Christian scholars that think that Luke Acts was written in the second century. That's still not the consensus, but it definitely is out there. So therefore, Acts could make the claim, and it's complete nonsense. Thank you for your question. If you enjoyed this program... Please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, Beterem Kol, Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, Bechev Tzokol, Azai Melech, Azai Melech, Shemu Nikra, Veachare. Thank you.